as the anyway, whoops welcome to the kingdom way on thursday 7 p.m yeah we're just saying that there's um some people that are missing and oh, one thing Pam. about oh pam's here pam's not missing pam's right on it um sometimes <laughs> when people go missing it's because they're they're going through a lot of stuff themselves and sometimes it's because um they know that they're not eating the way that they were wanting to and they're way off plan so uh it's what the addiction will do too food addiction it tries to isolate you but what we really need when we're going through those struggles is to come together. We need right. to come together and talk about it and talk through it. There's no condemnation at all. You know, it's just. We're you know, we're help. talking. We're talking about this the other day and why people isolate. And um, I was trying to figure out the other night when. Um, I was overeating. It wasn't really binging, but I was overeating. And I thought, oh, I could go, could go somewhere. But um, um, I didn't think anybody was going to judge me. In fact, if anything, oh, there, there's, there's What's cute that? little Patty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think anybody in these venues is going to say, you know, oh, how could you do that or anything? They, they, they. Right. It'd be, oh, you know, please let me help you. And if anything, it'd be more the other way. But um, I didn't I didn't want to be talked out of anything. I didn't want to sit there and listen oh, to you. Oh, you know, you're going to be sorry later on. And I just wanted to enjoy my my whatever it was. I don't even remember what whatever it was. It was. Yeah. yeah. So it's sort of like when I was a smoker, um, they would come around and show at work. They would show these videos Pictures. about what happened to your lungs mm -hmm. i never went right i knew it was bad for me i didn't and i knew i was going to continue smoking i didn't want to ruin my smoking yeah thinking about all that that's a good point sally you know that sometimes the reason people don't come is because they don't want to change i want to do yeah. what i want to do leave me alone yeah yeah for sure certainly for that moment but then when you're you're back into it and you really feel like, oh, I just I just overrate. I really, really want to get back on track. Then you do. Then you get back in. Right. Right. Yeah. And these things don't happen till a person's ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that and ready can be different, different days and different times. True. And then there's different events that happen in life that sometimes can throw us a little bit off course. But as the body of Christ, we're really here for each other. And we want to be there when someone's going through a struggle. So it's really hard to be there for someone when they're not there. And you're thinking, are they okay? I mean, yes, we can pray for them. And that's, the, that's what we can do. But other than that, it gets us concerned. It's like, are they okay? You know, has something happened? You know, but... But I get it. There's lots of reasons. Yeah, you guys yeah. are really amazing, though. You and Pat, and I, I believe Pam, as far as I can tell, have been what I call bright. You all call it something different. But for um, a long time, a pretty consecutive I think days, so. months, years. I think staying on plan, I think that's true. I think that we pretty much stay on plan, maybe not perfectly. Um, I know for myself, and I've talked about that several times, the overeating, definitely have, have done that. But going off plan, um, no. Mm -hmm. Or rarely at all, you know. But well, um, I, was, I was saying to ahead. Sally one time, yeah, uh, being a, a leader of Weight Watchers for 36 years uh, has enabled me to be a role model. And uh, it was important for me, 
important for me all those years because I couldn't stand up there and say something that I wasn't doing, okay? And I and I disclosed my faults also, like you just did, okay? You disclose your faults also, okay? So right. it really helped me, helped me uh, with my job <laughs> to yes. uh, keep my health going, you know? And uh, I used to say to my members uh, this statement, okay? I, I'd say several times, uh, please keep on coming to these meetings. Even though you're not, you know, um, perfect uh, in what you're doing, please keep coming because I see people in the grocery store and they're way far away, okay? And I go, oh, I know that person. And then all of a sudden it hits me. I can't hardly recognize them because they have gained so much weight back. And I said, my heart just aches. And, and I can't go up and say, come on back, come on back. Because, you know, I don't know where, what place they're at. And, you know, I used to preach that, if you want to call yeah. it preaching. Okay? Yep. I used to preach that to people, you know, keep on coming, you know, don't, don't give up, you know, and no matter what's happening. So yep. uh, I think uh, yep. in my case, uh, it's just, you know, not wanting to let other people down either because group support, you can tell with me, group support is still important to me. It I don't is. Care it's, it is. It's so important. It, okay. It really okay. Yeah. 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 It's so important. And uh, I never recognized it until um, I didn't have uh, a lot of um, people uh, for a while when I first uh, was let go from my job. And uh, but coming back, coming back <laughs> and with Sally, my friend, uh, inviting me and me meeting you and other people, uh, it really has been a plus for me. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. But uh, what you were just sharing there, I was thinking, what's the best way to learn something? The best mm -hmm. way to learn something is become the teacher. Ah, wow. yeah. Yeah. Become the yeah. teacher. Right? right. I taught for a long time and I had to learn so that I could teach just like role mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. So when I started my, my way of eating way back when, when I lost all that weight, it was because I was leading a couple of teams in a competition and I'm on ah. one of those teams. So now I have to set the example. So that's kind yeah. of, that's where that started. That's where that started. So, right. So it's when we get something like a gift from God, it's not for mm -hmm. us. It's for mm -hmm. us, for someone else. And that's what teaching is. We become the role model and we're doing it for other people. We're doing it for right. ourselves, for our health as well. Sure, sure, sure. But um, as we share and we help others, that's where the real empowerment comes from. Mm -hmm. it's, very sad. It. it's very sad for me to <clears throat> see because um, I see a lot of people yet. And uh you know, sometimes I'll say, you know, uh, as we get older, we have to think about still eating healthy. And I'll be talking to somebody and they'll go, oh, I don't know. I'm not going to worry about that anymore. There are days we're worried about that anymore. My days are numbered. I might just eat what I want to eat. And then it, there's no, like you say, there's no convincing them. Nope. They made their yeah. choice. Yep. They made their choice. It's very sad to me. Very sad. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's almost like the opposite. The older you get, I've had people say, what are you still dieting for? You're not still trying to get a man. Um, and oh. particularly, I would say it when, when you know, I was married. I said, oh, that's wow. the only reason. I, it probably was way down the list of why I dieted ever. Um, maybe to get into cute clothes and yeah, to get a man or something. But um mm -hmm. You know, I I never actually thought I'm I'm gonna lose ten pounds to get man. <laughs> but I've had people say that to me. You know, mm -hmm. you're fifty now, you're sixty now, you're married. What yeah. earth are you yeah. worried about dieting for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people focus on lifespan. And yes, our lifespan has expanded. People are living to 80, 90, a <laughs> hundred, whatever, because but how are they living? Oftentimes mm -hmm. they're living on a whole list of medication with a whole list of chronic right. illnesses, right. sometimes not able, able to think for themselves, don't know where they are sitting in a chair, mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. being fed by someone, but they're still alive. So we say, oh, right. look at our lifespan, but that's not our goal. What we want is a health span. 
We want to keep right. ourselves healthy yeah. for as long as we can. And in order to do that, one of the key things is nutrition. What are mm -hmm. we putting in our bodies? And what are we putting on our bodies? Yeah, that's another that's a whole other factor because mm -hmm. our skin is the largest organ that we have, our integumentary system inside and mm -hmm. outside. So whatever you're putting on your skin, if you're not able to eat that, you might not want it on your skin because it is going inside. You're absorbing mm -hmm. that. It's just right. a side thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that health span. This, um, I'm starting a book, um, the book that I, I tried to do in the ark and Joan decided not, it did have some things that she, it was before addiction was accepted. So she doesn't call it addiction, but she, she describes it as addiction. She just doesn't call it that. Um, and she doesn't have a, a diet, just whole foods. Um, but, um, anyway, she has a whole chapter on we are living longer and aging faster that's just what what you were saying exactly mm -hmm. that's exactly mm -hmm. it yeah mm -hmm. but um did you want to share the title of the book yeah um why we overeat and how to stop it has yeah. the best scientific explanation of what goes on in your brain wow uh, and just lots of practical tips on on uh, you have to get that emotional part of your brain on board because it has veto power and it means well for you. Um, right. I've heard you say, and that's the part of us that appreciates art that, that, that has, you know, religious enthusiasm that it's the part of the brain that researchers think is the seat of religious experiences. Mm -hmm. It's where we enjoy art and music and fall in love and everything. So it's not a bad part. It's a good part. We all want it. Um, it's just when it's when it's running the show in terms of our eating, mm -hmm. it's more impulsive and you know doesn't like to be hemmed in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she she gives ways of trying to get that get everybody on board so that the emotional brain knows that by eating well you're going to feel better your stomach's not going to hurt your skin's going to look better you're you know that um try to you know talk to it uh, I, I don't know but anyways um i love the book so elizabeth herself has a facebook page the author and she asked mm -hmm. me to do a book study so i'm doing that starting tomorrow and doing That's another right. one starting in bright believers so I'm going to recap each chapter every Friday, one by nice. one, and then hopefully people will respond to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's like, who's in control? Am I in control of my body? Mm -hmm. Or is it just my appetites that are in control? Who is mm -hmm. in control here? And there is nothing wrong, wrong. In fact, it's very right for us to be able to tell our body, look, body, you've had enough to eat. Mm -hmm. Look, body. <laughs> You've had, this is a nutritious meal. That's what you're having. Okay. It's like, we have mm -hmm. to be the parent to our body. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's that's right. That she even calls it like the inner child. Uh, uh, what, it, was it the, what was the George Bush thing? No, no child left. Behind. Mm -hmm. Is that it? What was it? No child behind. left behind. That mm -hmm. was it. That she used mm -hmm. to call That was what she used to say. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can't yep. leave that child behind you. You have to accommodate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You got to kind of talk to yourself and say, okay, enough's enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Parenting. That's why I haven't heard that in a long time. I'll have to bring that up since it's her. But yeah. The no child left behind. That always kind of tickled me. Yeah. Yeah. And there has to be rules in life. There has to be some kind of rules in right. life. You know what I mean? You do. Yes. <sighs> That's what keeps us safe. Like if you think of yes, it, remember right. you, have, you have a house, right? And you've got this picket fence around it. So that's the boundary. You've set the boundaries. Now you don't want your boundaries so tight mm -hmm. that you don't allow for any flexibility because there mm -hmm. are special occasions that maybe you're going to let something in that you wouldn't let at other times. You're not going to mm -hmm. open it right up, 
You're not opening up the gate and saying, okay, anything goes. No, <laughs> but you're going to allow, allow some things in at some times. Or maybe sometimes um, you eat a little bit more than you would at other times, which would be normal. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're hungrier I... than other times or, you know, celebrations like I was sharing with another group earlier. Well, I don't, I try to avoid any uh, cream in my coffee, but if I'm out, then I'm going to put some cream in. Mm -hmm. That's like everybody else is having dessert. Well, I'm going to have a coffee mm -hmm. with cream. There mm -hmm. you go. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, that works. Whereas at home, I try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I find with me, I need to put boundaries around things like eating, mm -hmm. shopping. Um, but other things, I don't need any boundaries, really. I just sort of, right. at this point, naturally kind of do the right thing. Or mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm but not going to act you. in a way that's going to get me in trouble. Right. Right. You know you. And you know those areas of weaknesses that you need some maybe tighter boundaries, other things you don't. I mean, I had a lot of kids and there were some kids that's like, no, you're not going outside of this space. That's all you can have is that much. And I had other ones that, yeah, I mean, you can go wherever you want. There's no deadline. There's no whatever, because she was responsible. She could do that. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. was good. Mm -hmm. But so it really depends on which area it is, right. which area of your life. Mm -hmm. so, and I, I like your approach that different things for different people that were not all cookie cutters. Um, right. I remember my mother used to saying that just bringing up my, my sister and myself, I was confident. I was always a confident kid. So she'd have to say, you know, be wary of this or, you know, be sure that someone's not taking advantage or um whatever mm -hmm. um with my sister who was very shy she was encouraging her go out and take some chances and um you know <laughs> do this she was teaching us two different messages um right. and my my sister used to call her on it i i did realize what she was doing but um yeah i mean they were both both very um appropriate for us for that yeah. person and that's why it's so important to know the child or for us to know ourselves. Right. right. What are the boundaries that we need to set? What are our weaknesses? You know, what are our mm -hmm. strengths? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, teachers do that with their students. They look at what are their strengths? What can we build right. on? And yeah, because we all have strengths too. Right? Yeah, it was really funny when I uh, first started going to counseling, I went to counseling at one time um, uh, through my marriage. And uh, I went to a church counselor. And uh, after I uh, explained my life, okay, he knew exactly who I was because I've noticed categories of people, okay, uh, that uh, you fall into, just as you're saying. Everybody's no cookie cutter. It's, it's categories, and we fall into. And that really amazed me. I was codependent, and I had to read about that. Uh, he suggested I read about that and, you know, know myself uh, and yes. not, recognize, not recognizing I was like that. Uh, but the things I had to change about myself, like you're indicating, uh, not only with losing weight, but um, uh, knowing that people can actually rule me <laughs> and yeah. different things like that, you know? So it's it's in life. Yeah, it's in life that uh, this can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Know yourself. And that's actually a bigger thing than what we think, <laughs> you know? Right, to know right. ourselves, it takes a lot of exploration, a lot of yeah. inner inner focus and, and mm -hmm. so what, who am I? Yeah. Who yeah. am I? And yeah. what is what really makes me tick? And when right. we look at changing our, our way of eating, I think Sally, you know, kind of mm -hmm. spoke into that a bit earlier. Why? So mm -hmm. If it's not, you don't want to catch a man, that's not it. Um, <laughs> so why? Why do you want to uh -huh. lose now, weight or change be. the way that you eat? What was that, Sally? Now for Pat, that might be a, a very legitimate motive. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it might be. I, I'm not. I'm not judging you, Pat. I mean, if that's your your why. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no, it's not my why. <laughs> take me or leave me now. Take me, Kathy. Take me or leave me now. I did a lot of work on myself. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, we. So we need to know that. We need to know why we want to do and and yeah. and what's really happening in this child. Who are we? And that's a, mm -hmm. a huge exploration. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a lifelong exploration. We learn so much, but then we always find out more. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and on that, to be honest with ourselves, because we can be so self-deceptive. We can think that, oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, no, that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But other people can look in as mm -hmm. your counselor did and say, oh, what is that? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, it, it, it just is how it is. We all have blind spots that we don't see in our own lives and other people mm -hmm. see it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So just being honest. And there's a time. There's a time for that to kind of be changed too you can't change everything overnight we we no. we grow up right little by little line upon line precept upon precept a little bit here a little there um events grow us up our learning more that helps grow grow us up other people the, the you know iron sharpens iron that helps grow us up too lots of things mm -hmm. eventually we'll grow up <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Baby, right. <laughs> well, at least in eternity. <laughs> any um <laughs> any other comments before we move on? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. We were talking, um, we were in chapter nine and we left off. Whoops, let me just get this part right here. 1 Corinthians 13, that we're all so familiar with. It's a love chapter. And learning to love ourselves. You know, love that little child that's within you. And if you love someone, you know, I really like the graphic I've got here. Because you wouldn't, if you love someone, you're not going to call them all these horrible names. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to call ourselves those things either. How many times have I done something and said, oh, whatever, you, I can't even yeah. say those words, yeah. but you know what, those negative things, it's not right. It's not right. If we treat mm -hmm. other people with love, why wouldn't we treat ourselves with love? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we read that love chapter, chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 13, Mostly we read it at weddings or we read it at funerals and we usually project love outward. And that's good. However, sometimes we fail to reflect that love inwardly. In other words, we speak kindness to, and we do acts of kindness and love to most everybody that we meet. You know, a smile, hi, um, give them things. But what about ourselves? When's the last time that you bought yourself some flowers, put them in a vase and enjoyed or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I, know, I do that from time to time. Just feel like that's what I want to do. Brings a smile to my face. So we give, we give all the others, we, we give them what we have and more, but we fail to treat ourselves with that same love and kindness that we show to them. But when God says to love our neighbors as ourselves, we do that well, loving them. But perhaps your parents loved you with all that they had to love. But they were deficient in some way, as we all are. We're all deficient in some way. So the love in us is not made complete. When we do something unwise, like going through a stop sign when driving, when we quickly retort, oh, whatever, I can't even say these words, but you can read it, stupid, da, 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 to the driver of, of, uh, of the vehicle. Maybe not our vehicle. If you drive in Toronto here in, in um, Canada, I can see that um, that could be a problem. <laughs> I don't okay. usually get frustrated. I take back roads if I can take them. But mm -hmm. in traffic, a lot of people really get this sort of anger, you know, when they start calling names to the other drivers. 
because they do some stupid things. But rest assured, we also do some stupid things. If we eat a huge no. bowl of ice, if we eat a huge bowl of ice cream when we're not hungry, we say in our hearts, it's something like, oh, what a pig. Or we look in the mirror when nobody's around and we see a totally different picture than those models in their skippy uh, swimwear. And we say, oh, you're so fat or whatever. We call ourselves names. Like, and then to top it off, we get angry with ourselves. We decide to punish ourselves in a harsh way because we deserve to be punished in our minds. You know, this is really what sets people up oftentimes for failure in an eating plan too. They overeat one day or they eat something that's off plan. So the next day, what do they do? They punish themselves and they're like, okay, then I'm not gonna eat anything today because you're gonna be punished. You are going that, you're not getting anything to eat, saying to ourselves. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that we're setting ourselves up for a, a binge cycle. So we're going to starve and then we're going to get so ravenously hungry and we're just going to binge. And we get into this horrible, horrible loop of doing it over and over again. So people that restrict in diets, that's what will happen. They'll go on their diet, strict, 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 perfect. And they're eating way less than what their body needs. And so what do they do? They have this rebound. As Pat was sharing earlier, there were people that were following on plan, but then they went off. And rather than just going back on to their plan, mm -hmm. they decide, you know, throw in the towel or they punish themselves. Okay, I'll go back, but I'm going to take a few days and I'm just not going to eat anything. And then I'll go back just so that when I stand on that scale, it's going to be okay. And it isn't. They do maybe even a few days and they try, but their body, the physiology is going to be screaming for food and they'll binge. And then now they're even higher than they were before, you know, and they get into this horrible, horrible cycle. So we design, we, we design the torment to make make ourselves suffer more. We punish ourselves starting tomorrow. I just went through this strict diet, a new set of laws. We lay down for ourselves or we download off some plan on the internet or we're never going to eat whatever it is, a certain item again. And maybe there's other reasons for that besides a diet, but um, or whatever the perceived evil food is because we're gonna punish ourselves. So it's really in the motive of why you're going to eat or why you're not going to eat something. So you're not going to, eat, or I'm going to say to myself, I don't eat these things. I don't eat bread, um, but I don't eat it because it affects my body in a negative way. Mm -hmm. That's why. Not because I'm punishing me, but because I'm blessing me. Mm -hmm. So it really looks... Um, goes to motive why are you doing what you're doing so love is the right thing to do this is not love it's not it does not come from the place of love and it's not how you should be treating a child of the most high when you're saying all these negative things love within is calling you to manifest his love to yourself the power of love within us has given us everything that we need to live a life of godliness or godlikeness through the true knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and excellence. For by these, he has granted us to us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3. So what is love? I love this little picture, actually. That's yeah. what love is. <laughs> it always, <laughs> yeah, it always, just like Sally, it puts a little chuckle on your face. So uh -huh. what does love do? <laughs> love hears no evil, sees no evil, right. speaks Aww. no evil. <laughs> <laughs> right. They are That's cute, right. though, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They are cute. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, actually, when I was living in Africa and I'd be in the hut. I remember one day I was in the hut 
and um, it actually was um, a straw thatched roof thing and it was round and my brother phoned from Alberta in Canada and I'm over there I was in Botswana and he says hey how how are you I said well I'm in I'm in Africa right now and I said as I'm talking to you on the phone there are these little monkeys and they're running a- around and they're actually yeah. holding something shiny in their hand and they're running just like you would see in the movies. I mean, they just <laughs> love their shiny little things. They're so cute. Uh, isn't so anyway, they are isn't this they are cute? Yeah, animals are cute. Yeah. So this isn't just a cute picture though. This is a biblical <laughs> truth. We're to abstain from every form of evil from mm. first threat. 1 Thessalonians 5.22. So hear no evil. The psalmist teaches us in the very first verse of the book of Psalms, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Psalm 1.1. So we're not going to be listening to that ungodly counsel. Don't listen to gossip, evil reports, or ungodly counsel. In other words, hear no evil. Mm-hmm. How about see no evil? Jesus himself, when it can't, comes to seeing no evil, he teaches us to go to extremes, to keep our eyes from causing us to sin. He says in Matthew 5, 29, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. That's serious stuff. Don't be looking on things that will cause you to sin. For it's more profitable for you that your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Now, he's not saying to literally cut your eye out, but close your eye off to that. Do not allow that eye to be looking upon those things that are going to cause you to sin. And then speaking no evil. The Apostle Paul admonished the saints in Ephesus to speak purely let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers ephesians 4 29 you know that corrupt communication i think that can take us back even to that past that past slide only that that's good to edifying to building up to encouraging, to strengthening someone, including Mm -hmm. ourselves, strengthening others, but also ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the first two, the hearing, the seeing, involve our mental and our emotional diet. The third aspect is the blessings or cursings that come out of our minds, our hearts, through our mind, our mouths. What we feed our mind and what we feed our heart is in essence who we are, in character at least. So once we consume a food, it's assimilated by our bodies and it's used or it's stored. We speak out of the abundance or the storage of whatever is within our hearts. If we feed ourselves mentally by exposing our minds to evil, then evil starts to become a part of who we are. I mean, yeah, I used to call this, I used to watch TV, the news in the morning, they had this whole thing. And I called it the morning murder report. (laughs) <laughs> and I stopped watching it. I thought, why do I need to hear this? I don't need to hear this. Look at the count we've got right now in Toronto. Oh, there was another one. There is another one or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just, I don't need to hear that. I don't need to be exposing myself to all the negativity that's happening in the world. Why? Take us back a few hundred years, just in our imagination, in our minds right now. We did not have the internet. We didn't have even the radio, television. I mean, it was somebody that came into town on a horse and go back a bit further. It was the town crier. That's it. So what you need to know is what's happening within your area. Basically, we don't really need to know all the details of what's happening around the world. And even though it gets imposed on us very frequently. Because we're feeding ourselves to things that are evil. Mm -hmm. And when you start to, whatever you feed grows. 
How about listening at work to off-color jokes? You know, I, I mean, some of them are just really, do you need to listen to it? I went for a walk this morning <laughs> to Tim, oh yeah, Tim Hortons. And I go there quite often in the morning because it's a nice walk. I like to go to a destination. I have a small black decaf. They know my order. I'm sitting there and there's a, a guy that's in there. He's there waiting for his friends. And he says, hey, you want to hear a joke? I said, I don't know. Do I want to hear a joke? <laughs> like, what do you got going today? Because he knows I don't want anything that's like, let's stay out of that. Um, I, don't, can't well, remember, I don't remember what the joke was, but whatever it was. I was at a dance and yeah. this fella that I don't know come up and asked me to dance and I got up and danced with him. And as we're dancing, he tells me a joke. And I, like you say, Kathy, I'm not into dirty jokes. So right. I didn't even, I didn't know what he was talking about and I didn't laugh. Okay. Oh. And he says to me, how come you didn't laugh? I said, because I don't even know what you're talking about. And he never asked me to dance again. I wouldn't have been danced with him anyhow. But you know what I mean? Isn't that something? Yep. Oh, yep. my God. I didn't even know what he was talking about. It was so rotten, I guess, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, well, yeah. Well, this one particular fellow, he had shared something one time. And I'm like, not my thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So he knows now that. Right. Just get it right first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. right. And it was fine, whatever it was he said, because I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. So watching that, soap operas, there's another one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just putting your imagination into lives, these fantasies. I mean, it's not reality. Uh, yeah, you can get really caught up in them. I don't even know if they exist anymore. Maybe they do. I don't watch TV. I've hardly watched TV in most of my life, actually. So I, I do don't love know what TV, you might and a lot of it is is fantasy. It's not yeah. quite as it's not quite as fantasy as soap operas, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't really get into because I just, you know, I'm, Me neither. I like movies that are a lot better acted than that, mm -hmm. and uh, I do go, but I really appreciate a really good character role and a good. To me, mm -hmm. somebody who acts really well, it's like a fine piece of art or music. True. Mm -hmm. True. I remember years ago when soap operas were out, and I don't know, what was it called? Days of Our Lives or something? Right. Mm -hmm. And somebody's watching it at their house, and I just happened to be there. It's like, okay, I got it. And then I think I wasn't back for months. They're at the same spot. Like they, <laughs> right. you know, I don't know what they do in the whole all those other shows that are in between because there's nothing happening. And quite mm -hmm. honestly, real life. You talk to somebody that has a real life, or if you talk to somebody like me that's got eight kids in a pile of whatever, a huge family, you don't mm -hmm. need a soap opera. Good grief, we got enough <laughs> things happening. So they they nice. like to escape though into something. I mean, I understand that. I like romance novels. I used to. I haven't read one in probably 10 years but um I used to enjoy them and they were a nice escape because I I worked a lot I worked long hours and worked hard and they were just a, a way to kind of go I into want, another world where people take uh -huh. bubble baths or meditate uh -huh. or something and yeah it was your downtime uh -huh. yeah I read Outlander yeah it was your downtime yeah, yeah. And and once again, I guess it's balance too and what you're going right. to do, right? You're not going to bubble bath for 20 hours a day because, <laughs> you, you, you know, this prune would be coming out and right. you'd be cold unless you kept putting hot water in. <laughs> but right. likewise, you wouldn't be reading the, whatever it is that long. Mm -hmm. But those soap operas, there were people watching them from the moment they oh, woke yeah. up to the time they went to sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, that's mm -hmm. a little bizarre. Yeah. Or, or it's like, I got to go home. No, I can't spend time with you. I got to get home to my right. soap opera. You know? Right. I remember people doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That too. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Right. Yes. Yeah. I used to get really mad on with a lot of the, um, the nursing staff 
when I worked in a hospital, there would they were on the wards, you know, watching, protecting the patients, but they were ideally supposed to be interacting with them. Um, but they saw their job, a lot of them as mainly making sure they didn't fall and that kind of stuff. And they would put those soap operas on and would say, well, the patients liked them, but you would see one or two patients sitting with the staff member <laughs> and would probably would watch whatever the staff member watched. Um, but, and just a bunch of them would be sitting there watching it all day. It used to just, mm. just really <laughs> bug me. Mm. Yeah, really. I, yeah. Get some work done, folks. Yeah. Yeah, really, you know, do, do something with the patients, interact with them, ask them about their mm -hmm. families or past or, um, exactly. you know, something. And I think today it's even worse than that, right? right. Because today we just right. all sit on our devices. In fact, I'm sitting here right now on my device <laughs> and I've got beside me my granddaughter. She's precious and she's on her device. <laughs> I, you so, know, I bet yeah. that's true. I bet well, if I went in and true. saw that same board now, they wouldn't be watching soap operas so much as everyone. But in some ways, the soap operas was better because the patients, if they wanted to be with the staff they wanted person, to watch it. Yeah, they yeah. could go and sit yeah. with them, mm -hmm. and and we see that, of course, in in at restaurants, we see that people at yes. home and in just sitting together, and they're all sitting on their device or whatever. Right. But anyway, yeah. So it's not that you can't do something, right? It's just, and we're not under the laws as far as that goes, but not necessarily all things are really good for us, mm -hmm. right? And as people, they come from, say, abusive or dysfunctional families, they may struggle their whole lives sometimes because of the effects of evil that's in their hearts. And it may be right. their exposure from when they were a child. So it's not a small thing. It's a life-changing process to deny access to evil in our hearts. In the right. area of consumption, of food or whatever, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional food, submit it to the Lord and let him speak to you regarding what you should hear or what you should see, expose yourself to, or what you should eat, right? And I know there's this other part called fasting, the F word, right? We've all heard the F word, fasting, <laughs> It's often a really taboo subject amongst Christians. The thought of denying ourselves in any way, it's usually not embraced by our ego. It's an altruistic thing, something or a higher purposed mind that will deny itself for something greater than itself. And all of us are actually called to fast. The details of your fasting is between you and the Lord. Maybe you're going to fast from a specific food. Maybe you're going to fast a number of hours a day i mean it's mm -hmm. between you and the lord what that is jesus didn't say you know if you fast he said when you fast so what does that yeah. mean and i know we've talked about this at other times in in whatever meetings so don't enter any fast without consulting with the lord and what he wants and get that spiritual wisdom through wise leadership some people say well i'm just going to fast for 40 days never fasted before in their lives. That's what they, no, you're not going to do that. I don't even think about it. Mm -mm. But perhaps, but perhaps you're going to, you know, fast a certain food on Fridays, like we were saying before with the Roman Catholics, okay, just fish on Friday, or during Lent, you're going to let go of uh, anything that's leavened, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So, you know, seek that wisdom. But first of all, seek it from the Lord. So I can assure you that you need to fast something. Lay aside technology for one day, like we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. or And spend that time with you and the Lord, your Bible. Right. And pull it out. Get, brush the dust off and maybe open it up. <laughs> Get a pen and a journal in a quiet place. And he'll speak right. something to you. Be prepared to write your thoughts. It's transformational. Maybe a retreat for the weekend. 
away from all civilization and all modern conveniences. Ah. <laughs> ah. I know people that do that. They will just I'm go away somewhere. Do, but I'm certainly not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just go away somewhere. Writers will oftentimes do that. They just want to get away and they're just going there, there to sit with the Lord and just they're going to do some writing. But find I want a an place air conditioner, to... a shower. Yeah. Well, I didn't say it had to be in the backwoods. But, you know, when I lived in Africa, too, that was another thing. They had what was called Prayer Mountain. And people would just go maybe for a few days, uh, maybe longer, maybe just for the day or a few hours. And they would go up Prayer Mountain and they're just going to camp there. They're going to hear the Lord. They're not bringing wow. food. They're just going to hear the Lord. That's what they're going for. Sounds like the like, Native Americans. Yeah. But serious stuff. Not just playing like, ah, you know. Yeah, they're a hardier group than I am. I'm, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> but then finding a place too, just a place to get away with God. Now that place to get yeah. away, it could be anything. I know for me, oftentimes it's when I drive in the car by myself. I love it. Right. I'll drive in the car by myself. I can talk to the Lord. People around me might see my lips going. They think I'm talking on a phone. Well, I am. I'm talking on a <laughs> heavenly phone. Right. right. <laughs> I'm talking higher up beyond satellite. Yeah. <laughs> he's never busy. And he's in the full. Yeah, it's never busy. It's always good. But... <laughs> so previously, with getting away, I owned well, 25 acres in northern Ontario. It was a beautiful getaway. And that's a picture of my previous property. Oh, mm. wow. And um, it was a place that I could connect connect to all of creation and with the creator. And that's that was my trailer. That's over there, too. And then I had mm -hmm. about a two or three acre um, pond here mm -hmm. and then 15 acres of forest in the back and then the the actual grounds. And yeah, it was that very, was very beautiful. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very nice. Um, it was just really hard for me to maintain it by myself. Yeah, and I didn't I really have any family that was coming up to help me or anybody to help me. And it's just, you know, it was hard to do. So anyway, I wound up selling that for a car that I don't have anymore. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, it was very peaceful. And I, I really enjoyed being up there. I deny the what's activity of your the car. What's happened to you? The update on your car. Oh on my car? Yeah. It's st um still just is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it still just is. We're still praying about that one. So we're going wow. to deny the activity of the busy culture that we live in for the solitude with the Lord. So food is food, whether it's feeding your spirit, soul, or your body, it's all related. So we're one so intricately connected is our spirit, our soul, and our body. It's one. You can't separate one from the other and think, well, I'm going to nourish my body. But my mind, I'm going to leave it wherever, I, in the gutter, or wherever you leave it. What affects one area, it's going to affect it all. So what would happen if the next time that we eat something that's unhealthy, or a little too much of your favorite treat, or perhaps we didn't move or exercise much for a while, and perhaps not at all, rather than beating ourselves up for it, we bring ourselves to repentance through kindness just as God does. So do you suppose this, O oh man, when you pass judgment on those who practice such things and do the same yourself, that you will not, that you will escape the judgment of God. Right? We can't be judging others and then going ahead and just doing the same thing. Or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience not knowing that the kindness of God leads us to repentance. But because of your stubbornness and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath and revelation 
of the righteous judgment of God, Romans 2, 4. What if we started to love ourselves unconditionally, like God does? What would happen if, if you would no longer pass judgment, if no longer pass judgment on us, but would practice forgiveness, kindness, tolerance, patience with ourselves, not jealousy and envy because someone else has the body that we want, nor boastful because we may have lost weight or lost an inch here or there or whatever we did. We did nothing except for the grace and the love of God in us. That's how we lost weight. So never take the glory. It belongs to God. Yes, maybe you, it was you who was obedient, that you were following your plan, that you were doing this, you were doing that. That's great. But don't give the glory to, oh, well, it's because I'm so good. No, it's because God led you to that. He helped you through that. He helped you with every choice that you make. So give the glory to him. It always belongs to him. And don't be rude to ourselves anymore. Did you want to share something, Pat? No, I'm agreeing with you. That's all. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Agreeing. Yeah. So it what if we didn't tell him? Go ahead. It just doesn't happen. He makes it no. happen. He. That's right. He makes it happen. He's the one mm -hmm. that led us to whatever it is. Right. He's right. the one that that helps us moment by moment to make that choice. Right. Yeah. So not being rude to ourselves and don't demand that we diet or live by some kind of man-made rules. Yes, we have guidelines but th that we set. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's things that God's given us and saying, and you stay within that. So if I, he says that, stay within that, stay within that. Don't secretly rejoice because our increase on the scale proves that we're gen we, that proves that we're genetically flawed for for excess or this is just how God wants me to be. No, let it not be so with you, my sister or brother. Love never gives up. Remember, we started with the love chapter, First Corinthians thirteen. Love never gives up. Love, love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and it endures through every circumstance, no matter what happens. I love that it's always hopeful. Right. Always. Hopeful always and hopeful. kind. Mm -hmm. Always hopeful and kind, yeah. I mean, beating ourselves up is never going to help us. Mm -hmm. Punishing ourselves won't help us because God says he you know, leads we all to get minis of that work. Exactly. We would be, wouldn't we? Because we've all yeah. done that. I'd be wasting away. And God isn't up there wanting to beat us either. He wants no. us to change, to become more like him. But he wants to do it through love and kindness. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good yeah. God, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Pretty good. Pretty good. You know? And so he wants us to be pretty good too. Just like that to ourselves and to others. Whoops, I'm going the wrong direction because I don't know which way I'm going. <laughs> My kids would tell you that I'm directionally challenged. You should, should see how I drive on the road. Wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm the same way with the slides. Anyway, we're pretty much, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, this um, study um, with a, my, my buddy, my one yeah. friend from Bright Line Eating and she's doing this course with Dr. Joy. Um, it's actually $5,400 for a six, to four, six month course. Um, there's about 40 people in it, but she asked me to do it with her because it involves some spiritual stuff. She's not spiritual at all, um, um, but she admires, has admired my faith. So anyways, the, the first thing was before you can move on to the second step, you have to come to terms with the first step, which is to come to have some idea of who God is for you. And it, it looks at what was your idea in childhood of God? What was your father like? What was your idea as, as a young adult, et cetera? And what's your idea now? And then the final um, exercise was really interesting to me is that if you could design your own God, what would he, what attributes would he have? 
And so for me, it was he was loving and forgiving and loved unconditionally and always around. And I thought, well, that's my God I'm describing. Exactly. Right on. That, yeah, that, that was right. that was kind of kind of a, a weird thing that that mm-hmm. exercise brought out. So and, and and many times that's what we'll do. We'll what, however our father was when we were a child, we mm-hmm. oftentimes think that God is just like our father. So if you had a father that was abusive or he was mm-hmm. angry all the time or he beat you, that's how we feel. That's like, oh, that's how God is. He's going to do that to me. But that's mm-hmm. not who God is. So they have to relearn all that. Whereas if you grew up with a, a dad that was, you know, kind and loving and whatever, that that's your view oftentimes. Mm-hmm. And, and mine was. Interesting, Brenda, who um, I'm doing this with, her father was an alcoholic. He was he was not a mean alcoholic, um, but he was a negligent one. He worked hard and provided, but um, he would come home and either just go to his room and he was absent for the rest of the night or go drinking with his friends and they wouldn't see him. But every once in a while, he would do these wonderful, spectacular things for them. And right. he was fun and kind and everything. And then he'd go be back to being totally negligent. Oh. And it's how she sees God. She believes yes. that he brought her, her husband, who's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But then otherwise think, he just faded out. Exactly. That's what you think. I think um, Pam wants to say something too. No, she doesn't no, want to say I, anything. No. Okay. I just saw that the um, <laughs> camera, camera was on her and um, and her mic was off. So I thought maybe. But yeah, and we do. we'd love any comments though. No, uh, well, she's she's driving. Just stay safe driving. driving there. Okay. Stay safe. And that that's Patrick's arm there. Uh. <laughs> yeah. But um yeah. Anyway. Oh. How did it get in the front if you're driving, girl? Pay attention to the road. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to pray and uh, close up. And if there is another comment, that's fine. So, Father God, I thank you so much for your love and your kindness for us. And I pray, God, that you would just uh, show us who you are. And how loving and how kind you really are. So that we can show others how loving and kind that you are to them too. I pray, Lord, for our food. That we would choose the things that you want us to see. That we would choose the things that you want us to hear. Mm -hmm. That we would choose the places that you want us to go. The people you want us to meet. And the and. Everything in our life, Lord, that would be led by your spirit. So even now, we just submit ourselves to you in spirit, soul, and body, that you would be glorified. And we give you all the thanks for everything that you've done so far, for bringing us this far. And you're going to take us all the way because you love us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.